God blesses people in so many ways. And sometimes these blessings can come in the way you least expect it. It can come when you're experiencing hardship or difficulties. The Bible says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. That was Jesus speaking in John chapter 16 verse 33. But it can also come when everything is working out fine. We are taught that God is a God of blessings and He longs to bless His people. It is easy to see God working in your life when the blessings are flowing in and all is well. But what happens when you can't see enough of His blessings for miles? What about when all you see is trouble, when all you see is trials, calamity or around you? Doesn't mean that God is not at work in your life just because you can't see what God is doing in your life. It doesn't mean He isn't moving heaven and earth to answer your prayers. Every individual God used mentally throughout the scripture went through seasons of hardship. Moses had to flee from his family who wanted to kill him. Elijah had people seeking his death. Joseph was sold by his brothers. Cunesto risked her life in order to save the Jewish people. Jesus' disciples were martyred for their commitment to Christ. And our Savior himself was beaten and crucified for us. And so our pain is not meaningless, but it has a purpose. A couple began praying after years of barrenness that they would become pregnant, that they would have a child. And they were very excited for this new chapter in their life as they prepared to have their first child. They strongly believed that God had spoken to them, that they would conceive although it was taking some time. But however, after some years, they indeed became pregnant and were overjoyed for this new chapter in their lives. Their great joy was soon replaced though with sorrow and grief after six weeks into the pregnancy. They had a miscarriage. They just had to believe that God would turn that sorrow into great joy. They believe that one of the paradoxes of Christianity is that our good God uses pain for good. Meaning that our biggest sorrows can result in our greatest joy. Or it can be the beginning of something beautiful. They were so strong in their faith that they believed that God had used that pain to strengthen them and to encourage others to trust God and to believe that He is working despite what we see. And what happened the following year, God blessed them with another pregnancy, resulting in a beautiful baby girl who has changed their lives. The baby became a blessing that covered up previous losses that they had experienced. Waiting prepares your heart today for the abundance coming tomorrow. It is in the time of waiting that God does his preparing for the gifts for the goodness and the greatness he will bring tomorrow. And so as we wait in purity's fall, so we are ready to walk in his best with purity. When he prepares us to become holy vessels, Abraham was a man who knew how to wait on God. He had the promise that he would conceive a child. Although he and his wife grew old without successfully conceiving, they continued to rely on God, believing in hope against all hope. He saw his miracle become a reality. For this reason, he became the father of faith because he learned to wait patiently on God. Sometimes God will put a Goliath in your life for you to find the David within you. After six negative reports of no rain, Elijah still believed that the rains were forthcoming. Perhaps Elijah knew that when your breakthrough and outpouring of victory is the closest, that is when difficulties may come upon you the most. 
and in this time God poured out blessings upon the land. Elijah's prayers had prevailed and God's answers had come. And what God has been able to do in the past, He can still do today. And thus, do not abandon your hope. But you gotta pray, you gotta persist with steadfast faith. You gotta know that God will come through for you. God hasn't brought you this far to leave you here. Before God shows you the big things up ahead, He wants you to see Him in the little things that are right in front of you. Many times, when we are walking through crises and difficulties in life, we comfort ourselves with the platitude that God is ready to do something big. The only explanation we can muster to understand our suffering is how awesome we are. God wants to change the world through us and therefore Satan is putting up a big fight to slow us down and to thwart the plan of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 it says and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose there are times when God blesses you and you don't see it coming your obedience your giftings and your humble spirit simply open doors that you didn't have to ask for consider the story of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 9 Though he never asked to be king, God saw fit for him to walk in a new anointing. Some open doors are so huge that if you know ahead of time, it would allow doubt and your personal insecurities to sabotage your open door. When God is trying to bless you, it can be confirmed through prayers. And although there are many ways to know if God is speaking, hearing His voice is one of them. There will be some doors God will have you walk through that go against conventional wisdom or patterns. Do not run from these opportunities, but seek the Lord in prayer. Because the more we are connected to God in prayer, the easier it will be to hear His voice with precision. And so, ultimately, it will be his voice that will illuminate the paths that you need to take. All other opportunities, no matter how great they may initially seem, may simply be a distraction for your life. And I pray that you will not allow your insecurity, you will not allow any naysayer or doubt to cheat you out of what God is trying to bless you with. The victory is not going to come in the way that you want it, or even in the time that you want it or you expect it. The one thing you must do is to hold on. Life's various battles and unending struggles can leave us battle weary and battle scared. Yet yeah, Jacob held on. In the morning, he received the blessing that was already his. Remember the words of the psalmist, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lastly, Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise when I sit in darkness. The Lord will be a light to me.